So um, balanced view is basically an invitation to train yourself in the education in the, of the nature of mind. So it's really an invitation to look at the way you're using your mind and to see what have you done before in your life and how is it working for you. So that's the invitation here to take a new look and to see what is really present when you are not focusing so much on the content of, of your mind but instead use the, the simple practice that we are offering here. So what is required is an openness. And I can see that was so essential for me when I came to this training. Because I could see that when I was approaching something new in my life, I was always filtering it through what I already knew. So it was very obvious for me that was I really learning something new or was I always comparing it to what I knew before? And I could also see that the biggest obstacles for learning anything in life is that you think that you know everything about it already. Isn't that obvious? So I think it was Einstein that said something like the, the thoughts that create a problem are never the same that resolves them. So that means we have to have something new. And that, in this training, we call that open <coughs> intelligence or opening intelligence. So what is opening intelligence? What is it really? That's a good question to start with. And a very powerful way to introduce yourself to that, right here, right now, is to just to stop the train, the train of thoughts. To just stop the thinking for a while. And just see what happens when you do that. Immediately you could sense there is a kind of, of alertness present. Something that is very powerful. The power to know. Something that is looking through your eyes when you're sitting here. And that part of you, we just call open intelligence in this training. You can use whatever word you like. Awareness, clarity, whatever. Doesn't matter. We just use in this training opening intelligence because it makes it very simple. Because it points to the fact that you, you use your mind in a different way now. You are open to your own experience. And the next step is to just see what is the content of our mind. What am I very used to focus on? And in this training <coughs> we call that data. So everything that you can perceive in life, thoughts, emotions, physical sensations, everything. Just everything that you can experience we call data, just to make it very simple. So you have open intelligence and you have data. And this basically to just keep it very, very simple. So many of us are very trained in just focusing on the data. Why? Because many times it's painful. States like anxiety, fear, jealousy, all of those states, we have just learned the best way to get rid of them is to try to change them. And how do we do that? We basically have three ways we can do that, or three ways we can use our mind. Indulge, avoid, or replace. And if you make that really simple, also you could say that you're either trying to do something, or you're just letting it be exactly as it is in short moments, in the beginning, in short moments. So that is the practice in balanced view, to take short moments whenever you remember to do so. Whenever you experience yourself trying to change your experience, you just relax there. You just take the short moments. So what happens when we don't use the short moments? What happens in our life when we focus on data? What is the results in our life when we do that? What I could see when I came to the training was that I was very much in a state of trying to change my experience. I couldn't really see that open intelligence and data are one and the same. I couldn't see that the data that I was fighting so hard to try to change actually was the dynamic energy of open intelligence. I was constantly trying to get from one state into another state. So that was the main practice. 
if I was meditating or if I went to my psychologist or whatever I was doing, the underlying basis of that was always I'm trying to change the state. Because I, ha I didn't have the simple instruction of how to use my mind when these afflictive states, as we call them in this training, when they were arising. So that is why openness is so important here. Because when you take a short moment, maybe for the first time in your life, you're really open to what you're experiencing. It's like maybe for the first time in your life, you're taking a look. What is really there when I'm not trying to change it? So it's like you're seeing the other aspect of the data, maybe for the first time in your life. And that is very powerful, but because what you're going to see more and more is this inseparability between data and open intelligence. So every thought and emotion that we have relates in the same way as a rainbow relates to space. It arises in space and it dissolves in space. So every thought and emotion that we have, if we don't try too hard to change them, they actually self-release, as every here and now always does. And as you so perfectly pointed out. So why are we trying so hard to change something that actually changes itself? Because if we don't have the proper education in this spontaneous arising of data, the full potentiation, and the, the, just the cycle of when it's self-release. If we don't have that education, then we just emphasize data. So that is very powerful, and to be able to do that, we have to have a support system. Because when we take the short moments in the beginning, it might be that you don't sense any difference at all. And it, it truly was like that for me. When I took the short moments, I could just see that open intelligence is present, and then immediately the thoughts came back again. So I couldn't really see that the thoughts are inseparable from open intelligence. I couldn't see that the presence that I had when I took the short moments was actually also in the thoughts himself. So it doesn't really matter if we take the short moment or not, because open intelligence is always on. But to take a short moment is just to learn and to see and to identify that open intelligence is always present. So this has to be the basis of all non-dualistic thinking, to really deeply experience this inseparability of whatever we experience in life and our natural state as open intelligence. So what are the practical results on, of this training? And that is basically what we do as balanced view trainers. We just share our own experience. So what I could see for myself when I was applying this technique or this practice was that things that I was coming into the training with, anger, for example, I was really struggling with anger or anxiety and fear. I could see that by taking the short moments, there was something in the midst of anger that I couldn't find before when I was trying to change the anger or the fear was actually something that was totally stable. There was something present that I wasn't aware of before. And the only reason I wasn't aware of it was that I was so focused on trying to change the experience that I had. So this part was totally unrecognized. So that is kind of the paradox of change. If you really try very hard to change something, what happens? Most of the time, nothing. So it's like the search itself for another state really blocks the experience of really see that everything is included in open intelligence. So again, what I started to see when I took the short moment in the midst of anger was that I could see that I could be totally stable in the midst of whatever I was experiencing. So there was just a shift from just notice one part to really see and experience there is something in the midst of fear that is not afraid of fear. And that was really a head twister for me in the beginning. How could it be that in the midst of fear, the total experience of fear, I'm not afraid at all? So that went everything upside down for me. Because before I was really trying very hard to get rid of fear, now I could see 
but I don't have to do that anymore. And then I started to see with all the afflictive states that I had, with this simple practice of taking short moments, just relaxing, letting everything be as it is, it was like I was experiencing something totally new in all the labeling I did before. So what you can see now is that it doesn't matter what idea you have in your head about open intelligence not being present in this moment. It's actually the labeling and your assurance that the open intelligence is not present in anger or in fear, for example, that not make it obvious for you. So that is one of the most powerful uh, instructions that I heard in the beginning was to stop describing. To not be so sure that anger is just your perception of anger, that there actually is something present in anger that you can only see if you have an open mind and an open attitude. And that was very, very radical for me because I was trained in, 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 in a practice that was basically oriented around trying to get from one state into another. So we can just see now that negative states is really the, the way back home ex to experience this non-dualistic experience in our life. We can see that everything that we have changed, everything that we have tried so hard to change is actually the way back to our precious, precious open intelligence or to our heart. So everything that I was trying to get rid of before, I now started to welcome in my life. I could see that everything and especially the things that I really, really wanted to get rid of was the most precious tool to find open intelligence. So I don't have to let go of anything. If you look at let go or embrace or accepting, all those concepts are based on, if you're really, really honest, that you want to get rid of something. I have to let go of my fear. I have to let go of my fear of an intimacy. It's quite the contrary. The fear of intimacy is the way that you can see that open intelligence is totally present. We don't have to fight anything. We don't have to let go of anything. Then we are back on square one again. It's so much more simple than try to let go or accept anything. We just have to relax, let the data just flow on by and just relax. Let go is like an effort, because it's based on trying to get rid of anything. And the same with acceptance. You can see if you're really, really honest, you try to accept away something that you don't really like. That's really hard. So the practice of short moments is so much more simple. It's just relax body and mind, resting deeply in the presence of whatever is coming up for you. And when short moments is not enough for you, then we have this wonderful, wonderful support system in this training. Because I could also see that in, be in the beginning when I was trying to rest with, say, jealousy, for example. Even though intellectually I, I knew that this is part of open intelligence, I still have a very strong belief that I have to get rid of, of jealousy, otherwise I can't feel, feel peaceful. So I needed the support system. I needed a trainer, I needed to go back to the teachings, I had to listen to talks, I had to go into the website to remind myself. Because the pull in those <coughs> afflictive states was so strong, so the short moments for me wasn't enough. And then we also have the fourth, and that is the community. And the community just reminds you over and over again about your true nature. A community of friends that don't buy into all your stories about what's appearing for you, basically. So this support system is for me something that is really different from every other practice that I have been involved in. Because you have this support system, and when you have done one of the basic trainings in Balance to You, we actually have on the website the 24 support system, wherever you are in the world, you always have access to a trainer. 
And for me, that was totally amazing. Is that really possible? And just, just to know that this support is available many times when I have really afflictive states was enough. I didn't have to contact them. I just knew that they were there. So the support system is also for me very important in this training because I can rely on that when the short moments you know, is, is not enough for me.